Right now, the legitimate head of the Republican Party are those who've been elected within the party structure. By that, I mean the chairman of the Republican Senatorial Committee, Mr. Steele, who is chairman of the Republican National Committee, uh, the chairman of the Republican Congressional Committee. And as to this dinner tonight, having worked on these dinners when I was uh, but a pup many years ago in this town, when your party has gotten shellacked, as my party did in November, Chris. This dinner is the first clarion call for whether or not people really want to come back and recognize that they need to do some serious shifting and self-examination. So it will be measured tonight by what the revenues are. All right, well, what do you think of Sarah Palin speaking tonight? Were you for or against that poss possibility? I was surprised that they, they made the request, and but I was more surprised that she turned it down. And uh, I must confess, as a female, um, I, I just had to shake my head and say, please, don't change your mind and make it, make it look like women always change their minds. Yeah, but, but in, a, in, a big, in a big world sense, do you think she's a great spokesman for the Republican Party, your party? I Would think, you like to see her out front I, as a spokesman for the party? I think we need everyone out front. I agree with Fred Malik's point, and that is that we got, hap, ha, we got fat and happy. We started spending the taxpayers' money. We overspent. We overregulated. And uh, we, we got fat and happy, and in the process, we thought we could play exclusionary games. And uh, in, in my estimation, this party should embrace everyone and should never have let Arlen Specter leave this party. Yeah, well, he's gone. Ha! ha! He's in with labor right now. Let's take a look at Cheney now on Colin Powell and Face the Nation. Here he is talking about Colin Powell. Colin Powell said Republicans would be better off if they didn't have uh, Rush Limbaugh out speaking for him. Where do you come down? Well, if I had to choose uh, in, in terms of being a Republican, I'd go with Rush Limbaugh, I think. I think um, my take on it was Colin had already left the party. I didn't know he was still a Republican. You know, so you, you think that he's not a Republican? I just noted he uh, endorsed um, the Democratic candidate for president this time, Barack Obama. I assume that um, that's some indication of his loyalty and his interest. And, and you said you'd take Rush Limbaugh for Colin Powell? I would. All right. Politically. Fred Malik, you've been a big fundraiser for the party all these years. I always thought one of your heroes was Colin Powell, that you wouldn't want to bounce him out of the party the way Cheney did there. Um, I absolutely would not. I've known Colin Powell for 35 years. He's one of the most honorable men, one of the great leaders of our party, one of the great leaders of our nation. I'm glad he reaffirmed his position as a Republican on national TV recently. I think he'll put all that to rest. I am sure that Rush Limbaugh and Dick Cheney are happy that he reaffirmed it and that he's part of the oh, big Republican Party. <laughs> you are such a Santa Claus, Fred. I watched it. You want me to play? I'm not going to play it again. <laughs> Dick Cheney, in his troll-like fashion, just ripped the guy out of the party and says, you know how he does it in that avuncular fashion? Well, I assume he's not a member of our party anymore. Let's take a look. Here's a, let him speak for himself. Here's General Powell defending his Republicanism. Rush will not get his wish, and Mr. Cheney was misinformed. I am still a Republican. I have always felt that the Republican Party should be more inclusive than it generally has been over the years. What do you make of this, Michelle? I think that you're seeing an internecine warfare that started between Cheney and Powell over policy differences many years ago. You're seeing inside ball. I uh, couldn't disagree more with um, Rush Limbaugh, excuse me very much. I don't think he has been elected even dog catcher as yet, and as a Republican, I don't want him as part of my party. But Chris, you have to admit, you miss Dick Cheney. You're pining <laughs> for Dick Cheney. Well, he keeps coming you'd back. Bring him he's up like, every day. He's like, Dick I have Cheney. to tell you, I Freddy think you Krueger miss him. I think you miss him. He's back in every him. movie, and this guy is back every day. He's out there hitting the AEI, which is a You're jonesing for, for Dick Cheney. Oh, no, I don't have to cry from. Uh, he is out there <laughs> loud and clear. Let me ask you all, uh, gent lady and gentlemen here. The Republican Party was built by an interesting coalition. As you guys are students of your party, I'm not any more than you are. There was the abolitionist wing that was very dramatic, you know, the, sort of the John Brown people that really wanted to get rid of slavery. Then there were the more established, but George Bush types of their are the George Bush senior types establishment. And that coalition's held together. Is it coming apart between the more wilder voices like Palin, Rush Limbaugh, even Dick Cheney, and the more established people who have to win elections and raise money? I'm asking you, Michelle, is there a divide or isn't there? There is a divide. There is absolutely a divide. 
uh, the fact is the party has been wondering, they've been examining their belly button because we got our heads handed right. to us in November. But as to whether or not uh, who's going to win this fight, if they don't determine they're going to be all-inclusive. Remember, Ronald Reagan was a Democrat who converted yeah. to the Republican Party. And, uh, uh, well, he I, united your party. Exactly. Who can do it today? Fred Malik, who can unite your party today? Can Sarah Palin unite the party? Well, Newt's speaking tonight. Let's give him a chance. He's a brilliant guy, but he didn't exactly leave the speakership under the most uh, friendly terms. He was sort of run out on a rail. Oh, come on, come on. He's a great, he's a great voice for the party, as is Sarah Palin. Okay, I'm but asking where, you. You think he's great? Where's the leadership for the party going to come? Well, how are we going to have a leader? How are we going to come back? Look back to 1992, the last time we lost a big election uh, as, as a presidency. We're going to come back with a great candidate in Virginia named Bob McDonald, who I think is going to be the next right. member of Virginia, and Chris Christie in New Jersey, who Good the best. president is running nine points ahead of Governor Corzine. I that's agree. going to start us back. That's going to embolden other good people to run, and, and that's where the future of our party lies. I agree with you. You mean down there at the middle level of governorships? You it's bet. not going to start. You it. You're not going to be able to unite at the top, in other words. Well, we will unite at the top, but you need a leader, and now you have a number of leaders, and they're okay. all good, and they're all doing their part. You but look to the governor. You are such leaders. a good party guy, Fred. Let me ask you this, Fred, because I know you're such a great party. You've served for, what, 50 Republican administrations so far. You know, <laughs> look at you got all your hair. You look great. Let me ask you this, my friend. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Do you really think Sarah Palin is a winner for you guys in New York, Connecticut, New England, Pennsylvania? Do you think that she can bring back state? States like Virginia bring back states do you think she's a winner in the in the eastern part of the country or she has a peculiar popularity out there in the rural areas of the West that that's really her strength and maybe the south I think she has strength across the country I think she appeals. she does she absolutely does she's she's a magnetic personality a great speaker okay. she's really good at energy and she's a great governor of Alaska Okay, we've got a quote. I think we have a quote of hers. Maybe we don't. if we do, we should show it now. A quote of hers the other day, which really is, I think, a bell ringer on the right. I'm not sure it sells among the center right, but you decide, Michelle. You're center right. Here she is. You need to tell me if this works in the moderate areas. We need to be aware of the creation of a fearful population and of fearful lawmakers being led to believe that big government is the answer to bail out the private sector, because then government gets to get in there and control it. And, mark my words, this is gonna happen next, I fear. Bail out next, debt-ridden states, then government gets to get in there and control the people. Well, this is a governor speaking, and she's talking about the evils of government and how government's going to come and get you. I think it's black helicopter stuff. I think it's fear-mongering. I listen to her voice, I hear it. They're coming to get us. No, no, no. You, you got to. No, well, you don't hear it Actually, that well. You tell me you what you hear, Fred. You're here, her pal. Here, here, here's what I'm. Here's what I'm hearing, Chris. The, the, the power of the people, the power of the private sector, incentives with the, with the private sector to bring this economy back to make this country great, just like it has for generations. That's what she's talking about. It's not big government that's going to bring this economy back. It's entrepreneurs and innovators around the country. Yeah, but that's not, you, Fred, you sound like a reasonable business Republican, which is what you are. She's talking about them coming to get us. The government's coming to get us. What does that mean? I think she's saying big government is not the answer. I think she's saying okay. she's more power to the people. Michelle, and more power I think you heard what I heard. I what think do you I hear heard. From her? What do I, you hear? Fear. I, I, first of all, I, I I think she's the governor of Alaska. She has a job that she needs to complete, and she can be measured on the basis of how she governs her own state first, as will everyone else. As we start with the elections yeah. that you and Fred alluded to beginning this week, well that's stated. when the test will come. Well I think stated. she appear, appeals to the paranoia in the American system somewhere. I think she's very good at it. I think her people worried about government. They do worry about the black helicopters. I got members of my family that think the government's coming to collect the guns. The, she's right with those babies. Anyway, thank you, Michelle Laxalt and Fred Mack. Thanks for coming in tonight to talk about.